Greetings collectors, followers and friends, Tom Hughes here and I have now finished this big uh, studio interior. Here it is. Um, I decided to leave myself out of the painting um, because the previous one I'd done uh, I was in it and I just thought it would be nice for a change to let the studio be the focus just the room on its own. I didn't want to be I didn't want to be part of it. Although I do appear right here. Uh, this is the previous interior I did where the light was just uh, white, just cool light. Um, so, and also, so, yeah, so this, this is the previous studio painting. So I'm sat here, there's the IMAX screen, there's the lamp. Uh, and here on the wall, if you look at this painting on my website, you can see a previous still life on the wall. So you've now got a painting within a painting within a painting, which I, which I quite like this sort of infinite regress thing, um, which is exciting to me. Um, yeah, the cool and the warm. It's something I'd, uh, it's, I actually have done it before. It was uh, in a painting I did um, for the RP uh, annual show which is me in my living room. Um, I don't know if you've seen that painting, but that had a very uh, warm light in the corner of the room, shining up the wall to the guitars. And uh, my canvas was lit with my studio lighting, my white light. Um, but I want to recreate that effect in the studio. Uh, one of the reasons is because the floor in here is painted white, as are the walls. So whatever light you shine into the room you're going to get um, the the actual colour reflected back off the white uh, this is hard the back side of this air filter I really like this thing it's it's a strange object it's sort of like a sort of almost, almost looks good like a futuristic dustbin or something but I love the this the rim to it this ring up here um, and this, I like this sort of corner area. This is just a turpentine white spirit uh, shrink wrap, uh, quad plug, uh, blue roll, all my coloured cubes in the storage box, some fire and ball primer. Uh, there's the black glass vase from previous paintings. Shrink wrap, that's a paint, uh, painting on Bristol Downs with the sun going down. Tibetan prayer flags, that's a wet carrier for 10 by 8 paintings. That's one of the bulbs that are in the white lamps, these lamps. Uh, it's my orb or my crystal ball. Um, this I found quite exciting. Um, that's what that is. It's, it's a stirring stick for my uh, um, primer, my oil primer that I use. It's absolutely caked now. Um, so I mix, I re-stir my primer every time I open the tin. So that's lying there on the table and the tip is getting the warm light. The top is getting indirect light bounced from around the room, which is cooler than this, but it's still got a slightly warm tint. And the back half is in shadow. Uh, yeah, the cool light's coming across, clipping past the door and just going across here. But you've got all this warm bounce light coming in, so that's sort of a combination of warm and cool. Is that neutral? I don't know. But the shadow bit is not being lit by here and it's all reflected light from the warm. So you've got uh, a very warm shadow combination of indirect warm light and direct warm light, uh, di direct cool light and only warm light on the tip and because it's white you'll get all those um, hues in their purest form reflected back at you which I find very interesting. I'm a real paint nerd as you may have gathered either from what I'm saying or looking at my work. I really, I'm quite a geek. I like I like investigating, I don't want to say the science behind it because that really does sound geeky, but 
it's it's sort of like that. It's what 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 happens to colour and surfaces when it's in different lighting conditions and experimenting with that in the realm of a what I think is a nice composition. Uh, that's what these paintings are about. How does the world look under, you know... <laughs> I do worry that it all sounds very um, sort of over-technical, but it's how my brain works and it's how I see things. And when I'm out and about walking around or when I'm driving in the car, I look at things and I think, why is that that colour? How would I paint that? How would I mix that? Um, especially in areas that aren't directly lit. It's this indirect light thing that is, I find so interesting. It's the, for example, the top of the table, um, no light is hitting that, no direct light. The lamp, this, this lamp's very, was very low, so it's hitting the edge of the table, it's not getting onto the top of the table. And this light coming across the door, it can't, it can't get onto the top, so it, everything on here is lit indirectly. Now there are photons bouncing around the room that are going to get into these corners and come down onto the top of here from the white light, but predominantly it's going to be from the warm light. So all this stuff that people say, you know, oh, uh, if the light's warm, the shadows are cool, and if the light's cool, the shadows are warm and stuff, that's all... <laughs> yes, in, uh, as, a sort, uh, as a rule, yeah, that does tend to appear in nature a lot, and you do see that. But if, for example, this wall was painted neon red and you shine a white light up there, for example, it's gonna, white light's gonna bounce off that and anywhere that isn't directly lit, like the top of the table, is gonna be um, bathed in reflected light from a red surface. So just to say that a shadow area is gonna be cool because a light is warm, is really missing out a lot of potential information. The only thing I think you can do is look, always look, because you don't know what reflected light, what, what objects and the colours of those objects, the light that they're going to be bouncing into shadow areas. Um, hmm. It's not as simple as warm, cool, shadows, highlights. Don't f fall for that. Just look, trust your eyes. Um, always trust your eyes and keep asking questions. Does it look right? Does it look right? Does it look like what I'm, what's in front of me? If it doesn't, wipe it off, remix, put it back in. Does it look like it should now? No, wipe it off again. So, yeah, rules are very, they're good to initially guide you but I think they should be seen as awarenesses rather than rules. To say that one thing always happens under all circumstances is a trap, and it isn't true. Uh, maybe I should talk about that more in future videos. Hmm. So, yeah. Oh, if you're wondering... <laughs> Let's get this down. If you are wondering what that round shape is up there. Uh, it's this little fella who sits up on my on my rack. Uh, this is a little guy called Puka who uh, this was a children's book character that I created when I was at university and my sister very kindly knitted me a real life version uh, complete with his sleepy hat so he sort of he sort of followed me around um, over the last twenty years, and he's found his way up there. I like I like to have him in the in the painting. Um, what else have we got that might be of interest uh, that you can't initially work out what it is? That red thing is a G clamp, uh, which just helps keep my uh, the supports for my palette on my easel. Um, that's a printer, that's a pack of A4 paper, uh, fluorescent tube lights, plastic wrap to wrap frames up, 
obviously various bottles of turpentine um, and empty jars. Uh, that is a old bed sheet, which I use as a dust sheet. And it's sort of bundles of, of rags. It's a hammer, blue roll, and obviously convex mirror. Uh, this is just coloured paper that I was using as experiments for um, backgrounds and adding things. This, yeah, again, tricky. Blue lit by a very warm light. You know, you get this sort of greeny tinge. Uh, hmm. oh, <coughs> excuse me. I'll give you a little walk around the painting. Okay, well, I hope that was of interest. See you soon.